I haven't been able to record anything in two weeks. I say that I recorded stuff today. So, for two weeks, basically, I was just... Every moment that I was not at work was just me trying to, you know... Just unwind from work. Um, and... Which is fine. It's not like I was in bad shape. Like, in lieu of absolutely everything that I'm about to say throughout this video, I'm fine. It's just, the problem is, is that I would like to record more, and I have not been able to record more. And more frustratingly, I would like to stream more, but I haven't been able to stream more. The problem with streaming is that the next race is the Coke 600, which is long, it requires my full attention because Lowe's is so broken and NASCAR Thunder 2004 is just a bad game <laughs> for 100% uh, length races. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But that's fine. That's fine. It'll happen eventually. It's happened four other times, I think. Four, three other times. Um, so, it'll happen. It'll happen eventually. Um, but yeah. Um, so, yeah, I recorded for the first time in two weeks today. So that, that felt nice. Um, but the, but I haven't been, I haven't been able to do one of these videos where I just talk at the camera for 30 minutes for so long. And, um, I've had a couple of ideas and wow, that screen looks really, really yellow in this screen. That's interesting. So, um, yeah, I turned the, uh, the blue light filter on the, on the uh, actual screen. And I think the blue light filter is on the phone screen too. So it's double blue light filter. So it just looks like piss. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Anyway. Um, I saw something on the internet that made me, uh, that twisted my panties a couple of days ago. It wasn't on Twitter this time. Crazy, I know, right? Um, there's the subreddit me IRL, which used to be one of the, like, best ironic memes pla places on the internet. And now it's just filled with communist bullshit, because Reddit. And it's all, like, anti-work shit. It's all, like, anti capitalism in general shit and you know really what communism is it's just anti-reality it's just you refusing to take responsibility for your own life and i know that every single time i talk about this stuff on on youtube in general anywhere whenever i talk about this shit i know i sound like just some fucking 60 year old like a war veteran who came back from Vietnam only to get shit on by everyone around him and then they fucking like just go back in my day we had to work for our dollar dues I know I sound like that but you see the thing is is that reality is not the internet the post that I saw was about like some dude was basically like so, one of my co-workers died, and three days later, we're at work, and every, and, the, and the boss was like, all right, we gotta find, we gotta move this stuff out, and we gotta find a, someone as a replacement, and they were basically like, this is how much your boss cares about you. And it's like, first of all, shut up. Second of all, go fuck yourself. This is, <laughs> like, what the fuck is the, what the boss gonna do okay what the fuck is the boss gonna do let's just let's just pretend that um i die tomorrow okay do do you think that i'm gonna sit there and, like in heaven or let's be honest in hell looking at the hello vision of what's going on in the world or above the surface right and um, and I'm watching everyone reacting to my death, and I see my boss is like, oh, looks like we gotta fucking put out a new ad for a new front desk person. Uh, like, what, what the fuck are you supposed to do? 
Oh, so, like, someone in your, you know, work ecosystem is no longer there. All right. What do you do? Do you just pick up the slack for an entire person? You know, an entire person who comes in 40 plus hours per week, you know, and does basically the entire job by himself. I'm, t I'm still talking about myself, by the way. <laughs> and, um, yeah, are you just gonna, are you, are you just gonna sit there and just cry for the rest of time because one of your workers died? You know, it sucks. But once again, fucking life. Fucking anti-reality. Anti-reality with these posts. People fucking die. It's what fucking happens. And when someone dies in a workplace situ in a workplace scenario, it's basically the same thing as if they, you know, left without putting their two weeks notice in. They walked off, you know? Now suddenly you got a giant gap in the schedule. Now suddenly everyone has to pick up that slack and and you know, and now you, you're like, oh, we're now doing all the work of an entire employee. Maybe we should search for a new employee to pick up all this extra work we suddenly have. It's like, oh, what's the fucking boss going to do? What's the boss going to do? Sit around and fucking cry about someone dying? If we lost an employee, if one of my coworkers died tomorrow, it would suck. Yes, it would. I would be pretty devastated probably because we have a really good group of people right now. And if one of them died, that'd be pretty fucked up. And I would probably not feel very good about it. But the first thing that I would think is, oh shit, suddenly there's a giant gap in our workforce. We should probably hire someone to replace this giant gap in the workforce. Like, t am I just supposed to sit around and cry about it for the rest of my life? What are you supposed to do? What's the boss supposed to do? What's the fucking boss supposed to do in that situation? Tell me, Redditor. It was probably a screen cap of a tweet, now that I think about it. So it probably was still Twitter pissing me off. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, know, what, I don't know what to fucking say. I don't know what you expect. I don't know what you expect that fucking boss to do. I don't know. I don't fucking know. And <laughs> And it's shit like this, that now that as someone who's taking on more and more responsibilities and becoming closer and closer to being, you know, in a manager or like actual boss of the entire organization position, I start to sit back and sit and think about things that I've already come to accept before I even accepted the position. It's just like, man, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. We fucking... We are all cogs in the wheel, all right? We are all cogs in the wheel, but that's just life. Life is being a cog in the wheel. So this is going to be a, compl a complete departure from what we've talked about so far, but um, I just thought about this the other day. So there is this stoplight that I have to go past, you know, to and from work. Basically, almost every day for the past two years, I've had to deal with this stoplight, and it sucks. It's a terrible stoplight. It's one of those ones that, like, I don't know how it actually works, but, like, it's red and then you drive up to it and stop, and then it turns green after a while, but it will never turn green unless someone is parked there and waiting for it. It's one of those stoplights, right? At least that's what it's supposed to be. Over the winter, it was, like, completely broken and switching between green and red, like, literally every 10 seconds. It was a nightmare to deal with because, you know, you'd just be driving along and then, and then you'd be, like, two feet in front of the fucking light and it would go red. And there'd be literally no one sitting at the fucking stoplight because it's 11 at night. And, um, yeah, so you're just sitting there for no reason wasting gas. And then you have to accelerate from a stop up to fucking 55 because that's the speed limit of the goddamn road once you get past the stoplight. So you're wasting all this fucking gas. Just accelerating shit. Anyway, like I said, it started changing. And for the last month, like, it's been really weird. Like, sometimes it'll sit at green for a long, long time, you know? And sometimes you'll come up to it and it's green and then you'll go past it and it's still green. But, like, what it's supposed to do is when the traffic runs out... It goes back to red and then the other direction goes green. There was a couple of days where we would come up to it. It would be green and there's like no cars in sight. And I go past it and it's still green. And it should have like changed back like before I even got to the intersection, right? 
And, like, it, it's got me thinking about, like, infrastructure and, like, how these lights work to begin with. And how, like, you know, they're kind of just experimenting with different ways for this light to work, I guess, is what's going on. Is what, in my opinion, is happening. Or it's just a global malfunction going on on there or whatever. And it kind of got me thinking that that's pretty much the same thing that I do. Whoever's controlling how this light works... It's just kind of experimenting and just like kind of throwing whatever they feel like at the stoplight to make it behave in different ways and affect traffic in different ways. That's the same thing that I do at my job. I manipulate everything in the background, you know? When you go to a hotel and you check into a room, none of that is predetermined. All of that, a lot of that happens the second that you walk to the desk. Sometimes it happens in the morning, you know, and sometimes the person that's before me made a decision. I take a look at that and I take a look at that decision when I get on and I'm like, nope. And I click the button and I change the rooms around. And then, and I, and I always think about how if I hadn't been at work that day, this person would be in a completely different room. Their entire experience in the hotel would be different. Such as, you know, moving someone from first floor to the top floor. That completely changes the experience of the customer. All right? If they're on the first floor, they're going to hear all the lobby stuff. They're going to hear people come in and out. They're probably going to hear people running through the fucking hallways because that's what fucking people do at this hotel. <laughs> but then, if I take them from first and move them to fourth, it's going to be a lot more quiet because all of the, you know, sophisticated people are on fourth. That's me making sure of that, by the way. <laughs> the best experience is on the fourth floor. At least in my, if you're at a hotel that's run by me in any case. But then they're also going to probably experience the elevator. The person that's staying on the first floor for their entire stay is probably never going to get in the elevator even once. But the person on the fourth floor is probably going to get in the elevator every single time. So when I move someone that's predetermined into the first or police selected on the first floor, and I move them onto the fourth floor, they're getting a completely different experience. It's wild. And all of this is experimentation. All of this is inferences that I have gained from the past five years. I can't believe I've been in this industry for so long. It's all decisions that I've, you know, previous experiences, previous encounters that I've had. I'm using all of that pre you know, gain knowledge to make a decision on who should go in what room. And if someone else is working, that's a completely different set of experiences, inferences, and just, you know, general knowledge of the job. And a lot of that has been experimentation. What happens if I put this type of person into this room? What happens if I put one of our regulars into a room that they're not used to being in? All of this is wild experimentation, and it leads me to yesterday. Yesterday, there was someone who was going to check in for two nights at a ridiculously low rate. Let's just say the rate was $100. And this is the most expensive room that we have in the entire hotel. I came into work, and I saw that, and I was like, no. <laughs> and I fucking put them into a different room type, which better matched the amount that they were paying. And that could have backfired on me horribly. They could have been promised that room type when they made the reservation. They could have called the GM earlier and been like bitching about it. And the GM was like, oh, all right. Well, here's what I'm going to do on your next reservation. I'm going to put you into our best room so that you can hopefully get a better experience. That could have been the case, and I could have just completely fucked all that up, and now we're going to get another terrible review. But no, no, that person that checked into that room that was supposed to be in the most expensive room, I moved them to a way worse room, and I didn't hear a fucking word about it. Not a word. And later that night, an online reservation came through for our most expensive room that we would, that, that reservation would not have been made had I not moved these people to a different room. You want to know how much that room sold for last night? 
and $10 before tax. So not only did we get the $100 per night room, we got that money because I moved into a different room. We gain an additional $200. I, with my five years of experience, five years of inferences, and five years of experimentation, I made the hotel $200. The exact same thing happened today, by the way. So the running total is $435 that me making decisions and that is a result of years of experimentation, I made the hotel nearly $500. That was me. I did that. That's me that did that. Isn't it wild? And this brings me back to the guy in the stoplights. That the guy that's, you know, just randomly pressing buttons and making commands for these lights. I have no idea how lights work. I didn't go into electrical engineering. I went into multimedia journalism. I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, I hate math. That's my excuse. That's the same thing that the fucking guy that's running the lights is doing. He's like, okay, I'm going to make these lights do this one day. And then the next day he's like, I'm going to change them so that they do this. It's all experimentation. And we are all playing with the lives of thousands. Because I have no input on what happens with the light situation. I guess I could call the Department of Transportation and be like, hey, yo, these lights are fucked up. But I don't. Whatever that dude that's controlling how the lights works, whatever he does, affects me and affects everyone else that's going to drive on that road. One dude has the power to affect an entire city. And I do the same thing on a smaller scale. One decision by me is going to affect the entire hotel. The power. The power of that is just absurd to me. That just one person, just the impact of one person. This is just, just, it's just if, if someone ever tells you that you don't matter, that nothing you do will ever make a difference... On a macro scale, maybe. Maybe you'll live your entire life, never come across someone who will ever be significant to you again in your life. There are so many people that have stayed in both the hotels that I've worked, that I've met once, I've interacted with once, I've taken their money once, and I've never seen them again. They are living entire lives. They had lived entire lives up to that moment, and they will live entire lives after that moment. And the one interaction that I had with them may have gone the same if anyone else had been in that situation. But if you manage to change the life trajectory of one person just because of one decision that you made on one day on the job, do you, do you have any idea of the like cosmic implications of that? It's the fucking butterfly effect. And it's wild to think how much power each and every one of us has. If you stock fucking groceries at Walmart, okay? If you decide that I'm going to put this box of stuff out right now, and the person who's looking for that item comes around the corner the minute that you are done putting that stuff out, they're like, oh, would you look at that? We've got chicken sandwiches today. Oh, looks like that's what I'm having for supper. Think if you hadn't decided to do that box. Think of if you had picked up a different box and went to a different aisle and stocked stuff in an entirely different section of the store. That person comes around the corner, looks in the freezer and sees, oh, there aren't any chicken sandwiches. Looks like I'm doing something else for supper tonight. And they decide, oh, I'm going to drive to fucking McDonald's instead. And they are speeding because everyone in this fucking town is determined to drive 8 to 10 miles an hour over the speed limit. No matter the fuck what. 
No matter the fuck what, they will tailgate the goddamn ever-loving shit out of you. Fuck everyone in this town. <laughs> and they decide to go to fucking McDonald's and drive 10 miles an hour with the speed limit. And the fucking police officer catches them and gives them a $55 speeding ticket. You just cost that person $55. Because they went to McDonald's instead of getting the chicken sandwiches that you could have put out when you went to a different aisle in the store. That is how much power that you have. If that's not the most inspirational thing that you could fucking think of, if that's not the most inspirational, like, motivational type thing that you could ever have, like, in your life, even if you're just some fucking loser who just stocks Walmart shelves for a living, hey, if it makes money, like, fuck it. Overnight Walmart stockers have been making $19.50 an hour for the past year and a half. And I'm sitting at a fucking job where I have to work every goddamn day. And I'm affecting, you know, and I'm making the hotel $500 just with my decision making. And I'm only getting fucking barely anything compared to that. I'm making less than $19.50 an hour. Oh, you can goddamn believe that. I'm making less than $19.50 an hour in the position that I am. And I'm making this hotel hundreds of dollars per day with my decision making skills. Just think about that. Think about that. Who's the real loser here? <laughs> Where were we going? Oh, yeah. You have the ability that no matter what position you are in life, no matter what the fuck you do, if you decide to stop at a stoplight when it's turning yellow instead of going, completely changing the flow of traffic, completely affecting when people make their destinations, whoever's behind you, completely, even if it just changes by a couple of seconds, you were the person that caused that change. The power that you have as a person. The power that you have. It's insane, isn't it? It's just wild to think. You the person that's making the sandwich. You're the one that's making the sandwiches at McDonald's, right? That the guy that got a speeding ticket because you went because the other person stocked the wrong item at the wrong time. That guy who's working at that McDonald's decides to put an extra slice of cheese onto a Big Mac. Well, that's additional choleric intake. That's additional, um, that's less stock for the, um, for the, for the McDonald's. So now they're one cheese slice short, which means that they're going to order more cheese slices earlier because they need to make up for the lost stock. And the person who's getting that Big Mac is actually on a diet. And now that they had that extra slice of cheese, now they're going to be, 0.1 pounds over their goal and they're gonna not be able to have a cheat day because you know that's how they structure their diet or whatever i don't fucking know dude the amount of power that you have is incomparable don't ever let anyone tell you that what that you don't matter all right that's the fucking lesson of this video so how does this tie into anti-communism <laughs> how does this tie into fucking fuck communism type shit let me tell you, the amount of power that you have to post underneath communist bullshit that this is garbage, working is good actually, productivity is good actually, don't be a communist. You, you could change the fucking, uh, you know, viewpoint of some impressionable 14 year old scrolling through Reddit. Alright? Alright, this is the amount of power that you have. I don't fucking know what to say, dude. I had some other stuff I wanted to talk about. There are some fucking wild people that stay in my goddamn hotel. <laughs> Summer's just started and I'm like, I cannot deal with these fuckers. I cannot deal with some of these fucking people at staying at this fucking hotel. So there was this couple who came in. The, the wife had a mask on. The husband didn't. And I'm just standing back here like, what year is it? <laughs> what fucking year is it? And I respect that. I respect that. If you want to fucking, you know, be, you know, controlled by the media, be my fucking guest. I don't care. I'm done trying to get through the fucking people. You live your fucking life. I'm done trying to make anyone's life better. All right? That's just me, though. So she come in with mask and stuff, and, like, that isn't even relevant to the story. I was just... I was, she's just a germaphobe or something and, it's, and I think she didn't want to hand me her driver's license she held it up at least she held it up in a place that I could read it 
Most people just fucking take their wallet out of their back pocket and go like, here it is, all right, looks like I'm done selling my, my driver's license. No, that's not how it works. I need the information off the driver's license. The mere act of looking at the driver's license is not why you need to present a driver's license at the check-in of a hotel. Someone is... Uh, JC. JC, you just ruined this video and made me have to edit it. Um, which is terrible news because this is on my fucking new phone, which I can't just plug into the fucking computer to get the fucking files off of. This lady fucking checks in and she just won't shut the fuck up. And I'm just like, yeah, 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 fuck off, please. Calls down to the desk and is like, we need fucking blankets, even though it's fucking June. And it's 80, it's 90 degrees out. It's record fucking highs for the past week. And you need another fucking blanket because you can't turn off the AC. It's 90 degrees out. Fuck you and your blankets. The, um... And this lady's fucking like, and I went up the stairs with, 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 with them when they checked in, you know, and I gave them the blankets and I'm like, here's your fucking blankets. And they were like, oh, no, they had them. They, I, I moved them rooms because they were like, oh, we can't be on the first floor. That's where the poor people are. We have to move up. And they were like, um, when they, when they checked, or I, I, maybe that was a different person. Basically what, what happened is when I went upstairs to give them the blanket, they were like, is there going to be any, uh, we thought that there was going to be something in here for our 30th anniversary. And I just was like, first of all, it was a booking.com room. Second of all, what? How, pray tell, obnoxious Karen, pray tell. How I, random front desk person in North Dakota, am supposed to know. Supposed to A, know that it was your 30th anniversary. And B, we're just a fucking hotel. You expect us to just give you stuff because it's your 30th anniversary? Bitch. I am. I was, I was absolutely dumbfounded by that statement. How are we supposed to know? And why are you expecting this? You're a you're a second level member of our rewards program. There are six levels. And second is lower. It's first is low, six is top. You were the, you were second tier. What? <laughs> oh my God. There have been other motherfuckers. There were other motherfuckers. There were other things that people have said to me thus far this summer that I was just like, how are you real? How are you a real human being? There was a guy that called the hotel directly, which means they had to look up our phone number, not on the internet, but like in a yellow pages book, because our phone number on Google is still wrong. They called the hotel directly to ask the front desk person the phone number to a local attraction. So you're telling me that you decided to look up the phone number of the hotel you'd be staying at to ask them for the phone number of the place that you were going to come and see. There was another guy that called us. 
And I was basically like, oh yeah, I'm coming down there here soon. And I'm like, I don't fucking care. And he was like, can you tell me about, this might've been the same fucking dude. No, it was a different fucking dude. Can you tell me about the thing that's going on on this day? And I was like, I don't fucking know. I don't have access to these lists of events. I just work at a hotel, motherfucker. I've never been to the fucking national park. I just work at the hotel next to it. I've never been to the fucking national park. I don't know anything about it. I don't know how to get there. You have a map on your fucking phone. Use your fucking phone, you old motherfuckers. This dude was like, can you get me? So is there any chance you could get me free tickets to this event? I'm like, no, I'm a hotel. I'm not the event. What makes you think that we just have free tickets to this event that has nothing to do with our hotel? We're not the sponsor of the event. We aren't holding any of the participants in this event at our hotel. Why would we have free tickets to this event? What makes you think that we would have free tickets to this random fucking event? And what makes you think that we would give it to you? Random Expedia fucking reservation. What makes you think any of that? Are you a real human being? What is this? It's June. It's June 6th. We have another three months of this. My brain is in shambles. Three more months of this. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Three more months of this. Just three more months. I'm gonna stop the video here. Cause now I'm, I'm mad because I have to fucking edit this. I don't know, man. I don't fucking know. It's been a while since I've done one of these videos, so that was fun at least. Thanks for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in whatever it is that I do next. Hopefully we stream this Friday. No promises. Bye.